adjusting the pH, I guess you could say, you know, is that what, what would you use to adjust the pH? Obviously, you know, it's an important consideration. Um, I do think that in some cases, like for your water in particular, if you have a lot of calcium carbonate or even sodium carbonate, um, particularly if it's high in calcium, you know, the, the least effective way to adjust the pH is going to be by using a phosphoric acid based or a sulfuric acid based pH down. And the reason for that is because if you have high calcium dissolved in the tap water or in the well water, and you're putting a large amount of phosphorus or sulfur in with that, <clears throat> you're going to create calcium sulfate, which is gypsum or drywall, or you're going to create calcium phosphate, which is what your bones are made out of. And neither one of those two forms of calcium is very soluble. So what you're doing is taking the calcium that's naturally present in the water and exposing it to a compound that decreases the availability of that calcium. I would say it's a much better idea to use something like vinegar to adjust the pH because that particular um, form of calcium, calcium acetate, is significantly more soluble. It's like thousands of times more soluble than the calcium phosphate and the calcium sulfate. So for every drop of vinegar that you put in, you could be increasing the availability of calcium significantly for the plants rather than decreasing it. The other thing to consider too is that a lot of the interactions that organic acids have with carbonates is one that they'll attack chemically the carbonate bond itself that that you know the carbonate is bonded to a cation and they'll attack that bond free up that mineral and effectively chelate it or complex it and then the bicarbonate gets off gas to co2 because of that chemical attack if you will that uh, the proper ph down like a vinegar based ph down would be able to afford um, most of the vinegar out there that you buy at the store is going to be around three to five percent acidity if you're dealing with a really, really hard well water, it might be beneficial to find something stronger. They do make like an 80% acetic acid solution. Sometimes it'll be called glacial acetic acid. Um, the stuff is very, very concentrated. You know, phosphoric acid is interesting because you can open up a bottle of 75% phos acid and smell it, and it smells actually kind of sweet. It's not unpalatable. But if you try to do the same thing with 80% vinegar, you're going to burn your nose, your eyes are going to burn, you're going to cough, and it's just not going to be a good day. So. I would recommend to people to use vinegar if they're dealing with water that's high in calcium, but find the appropriate strength. If it's three to 5%, that's perfectly fine. It's going to work great. Nice little benefit there too, is that any kind of excess organic acid, excess vinegar is going to get rapidly metabolized. It's a really, really good food source for beneficial microbes and fungi. In fact, acetic acid residues or acetates are the most common metabolites in all of nature. Everything has an acetate associated with it at some point. Everything that microbes do um, dovetails perfectly into acetate-based chemistry, and same thing with fungi and plants as well. They all utilize very, very high concentrations of acetate. So it becomes very difficult to throw the equilibrium in the soil off. It becomes very difficult to burn the plants. You could easily overdo it with something like a sulfuric acid or a nitric acid, phosphoric acid. You know, you can really damage, um, if taken too far, you can really damage the physical and chemical properties of the soil plus the biological qualities of the soil. But the same thing is much harder to achieve when you're using organic acids like vinegar. It's so difficult to put too much in. Obviously you'd, you'd have to like really go overboard, but you know, um, point being ultimately that there's a huge buffer range as far as what's safe and what's acceptable. I'm going to have to switch to vinegar after hearing this one. Yeah. Cause that was one of the questions is a lot of growers swear that using some sort of organic or all natural pH adjuster is better than using like phosphoric acid, for example. Lemon juice was named. You had talk about vinegar. Baking soda was also named. So you would generally recommend for that for folks to go after those sources versus synthetic sources. I would say in most, in almost all cases, yeah, it makes a lot of sense to do it that way. Um, and keep in mind too that you know the organic acids, like the if you're using lemon juice, for example, or if you're using uh, vinegar those types of acids are quickly metabolized by almost all organisms on this planet. Um, this is a really important consideration because when plants are exposed to high concentrations of these acids, they can take them up and they'll just burn them as extra fuel sources. It's not a problem for them to intake, you know, pretty much everything that you throw at them and to be able to actually properly metabolize it. Plants have not evolved similar mechanisms to deal with high concentrations of phosphoric acid because it just doesn't exist out of nature like there's no such thing as phosphoric acid out of nature anywhere but there is such a thing as vinegar and acetic acid and citric acid and ascorbic acid which is what you're going to find inside of 
lemon juice, which is vitamin C, basically. Citric acid is a little bit different. I think a lot of people associate citrus fruits with citric acid, and certainly citrus fruits produce some citric acid, but they primarily produce a different kind of acid called ascorbic acid, which is vitamin C, and that's the chief organic acid that they produce. But um, ascorbic acid is useful in plants. It's actually a fundamental in all plants that are grown anywhere on Earth. Ascorbic acid is one of the fundamental non-enzymatic antioxidants inside of a plant, meaning if you knock out ascorbic acid and you just prevent the plant from having it, there is no such thing as a plant cell anymore. It can't function without ascorbic acid. It's, it's fundamental to the existence of a plant. So, of course, it makes sense if you supplement organic acids like vitamin C to the plants that they naturally have a very uh, sophisticated way of dealing with it. They, they can funnel you, they, break, they can take it in, break it down, and then funnel that energy towards any number of things. But that's not true with sulfuric acid or nitric acid or phosphoric acid. So you'll find that the tolerance that your plants and your soil and your microbes have for vinegar are significantly greater than, you know, for phosphoric acid and some of the synthetic pH downs. Um, I would avoid using baking soda if possible because baking soda is typically, um, it's a, it's a carbonate or bicarbonate. Um, and that could kind of create some, some issues overall. So. This clip is brought to you by Happy Hydro. For all your garden equipment needs, visit happyhydro.com, link is in the video description, and use the discount code MrGrowIt 